Welcome to another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. My name is Molly McGrath, and I am the creator of this Office Altering Podcast. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. As always, you can check us out at hiringandempowering.com. All right, today we are talking about a very, very real subject that I am experiencing and working with law firms. Today we are talking about post-traumatic growth, frustration, and breakthroughs. I just had a VIP one-on-one session with a firm, and I've worked with them in the past, and they've had extraordinary growth um, over the past year. Uh, clipping at around 46.5%, which is, I mean, pretty dang close to doubling your practice. And many law firms, especially since uh, the pandemic, what have you, have experienced growth. I have yet to talk with a law firm that has said this has been the worst year of our life from a financial perspective. I'm not talking about profitability, what have you, from, but from lead generation, revenue generation, et cetera. All the things that should make us be, you know, doing cartwheels as an entrepreneur and a business owner. But with growth comes a tremendous amount of frustrations. And you've heard me say it once, you've heard me say it a million times if we've been chatting over the years, behind every breakdown is a breakthrough. So when you are on a path of growth, the tools, the strategies, the ways of being, the mindset, the behaviors, the structure, the standards, what have you, no longer work when you're on a path of growth. So one of the sayings of, you know, the tools that got you out of the kingdom are not the tools that will get you to the promised land I've heard before. And I love that statement. And while we have money in the bank and we're not white knuckling payroll, we're not waking up at two o'clock in the morning in a pool of sweat about money, our money, our money concerns are very different after growth. So I'm hearing sitting here in the new year, in the beginning of the year, approaching um, February, which is just insane when you think there's 11 months left in the new year. And I don't mean to breathe fear into the room, but by the same token, fear is a motivator at some times. And when you have growth, you have more problems, right? More people, more problems, more money, more problems. We all know this. But doesn't have to be that way where you're walking around constantly disappointed, frustrated in your people, in your process, et cetera. I get it as a business owner. I feel it all the time as well, even though I'm a huge advocate and an unwavering stand for employees and team empowerment and creating entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs world and all these buzz gushy words you hear me talk about all the time. But as a way of a reminder, it doesn't have to be this way where you're consistently frustrated and you're constantly feeling like you're getting kicked in the teeth, especially when you're on a path of growth. So I really, really want to invite you as a listener, whether you're an employee and hopefully you are on a path of growth, you better be on a path of growth. You're not just there for the paycheck or an entrepreneur, or a C-suite, or COO, PLA, whatever term resonates with you, attorney, what have you, pause. The power of the pause is necessary right now. And you always hear me talking about put pen to paper. And I'll hear statements like, everything's falling apart, nothing's working, things of this nature, which is not true. There's probably one area, which is typically in relationships, which is typically in our people that is not working, which causes an emotional explosion. So right now I want to talk about micro adjustments. I also want for you to stop and pause and do a look back. And I want you to find some celebration and acknowledgement and dare I say, finding some freaking fun in what you're doing again 
and for you to be able to really get clear in what is not working, where you are frustrated, where you are need of a two millimeter shift, a micro adjustment, where your need of having conversations with the people in your life in regards to really getting clear about this post-traumatic growth. We've all experienced it. And yeah, you should, this is everything I wish for. This is everything I wanted. This is why I opened up my own business, my own practice. This is why I took this job at this business, what have you. But at the end of the day, let's get really clear. So first and foremost, in order to have a frustration breakthrough, in order to have any type of breakthrough, you have to get very clear on where the frustration lies and what's not working. So for you to get those ugly gremlins out of your head that are getting louder and louder and louder, that's an indication that you're on a breakthrough. When you have so much frustration or feel like you're going, you're getting knocked in the teeth every day, you're feeling like you're going a million miles an hour, you're exhausted, you're disappointed, you're frustrated, your trust in your people, your process, your production, what have you are being challenged. That's when you know you are absolutely on the precipice of a breakthrough. So for right now, really the goal is for you to get clear what gremlins that are loud, which are indicators that you're on the right track and write down all of them. Where are the frustrations and what's not working? And I want you to do write everything personally, professionally, People, name it, absolutely name it. And then from there, get really clear on what areas they're anchoring to, whether it be your process, whether it be job descriptions, whether it be lack of employee reviews or growth plans. Maybe it might be around your bookkeeping. You're not getting a weekly um, summary from your bookkeeper. Right now, a lot of attorneys I'm talking about are feeling completely overwhelmed. It's shining the flashlight on their finances. We have money in the bank. That's great, but nothing's making sense because at the end of the day, I don't have two nickels to rub together. But we had, you know, per um, paper, all this exponential growth. So getting really clear, it's, it's real. When you feel this, you're like, but I don't feel any freer mentally, emotionally, financially, what have you. And I feel like all of this growth. I had an attorney say to me in this VIP, they just bought another practice, um, merged with another practice. And he's like, boy, oh boy, why did I do this? I'm like, well, all right, whoa, 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 time out. The reasons that you did this, what did you want out of this? You wanted the database. You wanted the referral sources. You wanted their annual maintenance program that they have, which is very, very successful. Let's list all the reasons why you wanted this. Okay, did you get that? And did you deliver on that 129 days after buying the second practice? Resounding 100% yes. The database is what it said it was. The referral sources, absolutely what they said it was. Sitting here in January, money coming in the door, uh, pretty much in pretty healthy stream uh, for the maintenance program, what have you. Okay, well, what's telling you? What's the 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 regret? What's the what's the uh, frustration? Oh, all the emotional crap that came with it. The employees or the partner that I just bought this from, what have you, things were kind of a little bit sideways right now in our communication. All right, that's great. Let's just identify that and let's find a turnaround. Let's fix it. So dump everything that's not working and just acknowledge right now you are 100% in a post-traumatic growth. It's normal. Every business owner is feeling it. It's like almost like a grieving process. It's almost like what just happened? I just got out of the vortex. I just got out of this vicious cycle. And yes, we have growth, but it just feels chaotic. And it feels chaotic if you are not doing your daily planning. If you are not anchoring every single solitary day 
in who you are, what you're up to, and your vision, and what a badass you are. So this one thing that I really want you to, once you download all your frustrations, now let's talk about the celebrations and really doing a look back. Number one, realize and appreciate that you absolutely created this and created this on your terms. And if you don't know that, or you don't believe that, or you can't authentically say that, then get really clear on what your life terms are, what your business terms are. So you can consistently anchor to them to make sure you're not abandoning yourself, feeling like you own a a bag of headaches. Like get really, really clear what your terms are. And I, you know, sometimes I talk about this in the book, Transitions. And if any of you are going through a transition, I highly recommend this book. And it talks about when you're going through a transition, when you're going through growth, there's a portion called the neutral zone. And most people skip over that. And that's why they feel like they just have more headaches and heartaches. So don't skip over the neutral zone. That's what we're talking about right now. When you make a transition, when you come off of a path of growth, you need that power of the pause where you stop and anchor into and get really clear on the pieces of, okay, that was a roller coaster ride, but you have to do the reflection piece of it. Otherwise, resentment will start to come in, disappointment, frustration, and all of those gremlins will come in louder and louder and louder, which is telling you, you didn't do this exercise. It's telling you that you didn't have the power of the pause. So after whatever you're coming off of, a breakup of a partnership, a buyout of another partnership, a lot of employee transition, a tremendous amount or joining another organization, database migration, moving from Clio to Lawmatics or vice versa or Practice Panther or whatever they may be, and knowing that you had made it, you got out. And now let's do the look back. So number one, realizing and appreciating that you accepted it on your terms, just like this law firm. What were your terms? What were your agreements? What did you want? You got all that. It was, but you have all this emotional crap going on behind it. So let's just name it for what it is. Number two, focus on really the deepening relationships that are good and true that you have and amplify those and identify the ones that aren't working. Number three, really look at, and this one's going to be hard for you, of what you're tolerating. If you're on a path of growth, you can't make it with half efforts, with questionable people, with bad thoughts or gremlins that are weakening your views and your perspective and already waking up every day expecting more frustration and headaches and disappointment. So we have to really work at elevating you as a leader, whatever seat and position you sit in for your dreams to come true. But it has to be structured and it really has to be a process and a system systemize this part of what's next. How are we going to do the next level of up leveling and elevation differently? What needs to change? What needs to go? What needs to grow? Because that is dependent. So go the leader. So go everybody else in the firm. Today in the VIP session, one of the client service coordinators was balking and balking and balking about her team under her. But she showed up in the meeting hot and heavy, all fueled off, all pissed off, already expecting, well, we tried that. They don't do it. They blah, blah, making victimizing. And I'm like, well, whoa, 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 time out, Susie. Because how are you showing up? You're the leader. You're frantic. You're chaotic. You're negative. And I don't mean negative in a way that's a negative person. She's a rock star. But sometimes you're going so many minutes a mile that the people behind you, you're training them. They're actually cloning you right now. So you have to look at you. So here's just one thing I really want to say about this. When you are on a path of growth and after the growth, in addition to this, is anchoring to your calendar. 
if I were to walk in and we hopped on a Zoom or any coach or professional or consultant that you work with, and they were to look at your calendar, does your calendar really reflect what you're doing to go to your next level for your next vision? If somebody were to come in and do an audit of your calendar and take a look at the next month, the next quarter, what have you, would it be clear on what you're creating this year because of the activities, what you're doing? Would it be clear on what you are choosing in whatever position you are as a leader, what have you, if you're doing lower level stuff, that's not going to support you with the growth. You might've got to a place of growth this year by sheer chaos. Well, the goal is that you're not going to get there this time because that way we're going to do it intentional in a way that lights you up. If you look at the activities on your calendar and look at what you're responsible at, what you've done in the past and where you're going now, what you are responsible for in the seat that you sit on as an entrepreneur, what have you, doesn't light you up. Is it something that you want to do uh, do again and again and again and book more time for? If it doesn't, change it. Because procrastination is total BS. Procrastination, in my experience, is just that this is something that I either don't have a process for or I'm not passionate about. Which of the two is it? Is it something that you resent having to do or is it something you're scared to do because you haven't done it before? But it does have to be... It does need to be part of your weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly planning because it's attached to growth. It's attached to your vision. So if your schedule, your calendar feels and looks heavy and hard and overwhelming and boring and exhausting and like you feel like you have a job, then it's not an abundance plan. It's not a growth plan. And you might have been able to stomach it last year, but now after this post-traumatic growth, and I'm using that strong word because it's true, it's real. We went through the burning buildings to get here. And this time, this year, we're going to choose light, easy, flow, exciting, light you up, and anchor to your vision. So what would your board of directors say about how you spend your time? Is your calendar filled with a to-do list and management and everybody else's agenda? Or is it focus, intentional vision management? Is it something that you would say a hell yes to or a hell no to? Because a maybe is self-abandonment. A maybe causes more frustration. And the greatest definition of resentment, if you've ever heard me say it before, that I've heard during the pandemic is resentment is just self-abandonment. So follow the breadcrumbs, follow the clues, get deeply curious, pause, and look at what you're choosing. And really make certain that your calendar, your schedule, your planning, that if I were to look at or your board of directors, it would be crystal clear on what you are creating this year for your next level of growth, whatever that means to you. It might not be 46 plus percent. You might be completely happy with 20% while we fix all the stuff that caused so much frustration and breakdown, et cetera. So give yourself this gift of time. Give yourself this gift of silence. Give yourself this gift of deep discovery. Looking back and reflection, finding the celebration, getting clear on what worked, getting clear on what did not work. You're in, you know, you're a month into this new year. You already know where you see patterns, where you see the, you know, holdover, the bringover of what frustrated you in 2021, the year before. Do a stop restart right now before you move into month two of the new year. While also really looking and doing the celebration of what you created and what parts of it 
lit you up and were anchored to your vision and what parts of it were just like baptismal by fire and get this off my calendar. So let me know, reach out, no more suffering in silence. If you are stuck, you're jammed up, or you're not sure how to have those conversations where you're breaking this cycle of half efforts, questionable people, or the gremlins that are keeping you that you're consistently choosing if you don't do the exercise in regards to keeping you stuck, because it's really just fear of what, you know, you 2.0 looks like. Let us know how you do. Reach out. No suffering in silence. All right. That's a good stopping point for us. We've reached the end of yet another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast. Where dream teams of entrepreneurs in an entrepreneur's world really do come true. Listen, whether you're a business owner, executive, or responsible for hiring in your law firm, we fully understand hiring, onboarding, training, and leadership is very expensive, exhausting, overwhelming, and time-consuming for the already tax professional. Well, we have your back on all fronts. For 25 years, we have transformed over 4,000 law firm teams into becoming the most efficient, resourceful, and profitable asset of your business. Check out our Smart Hire Solution or the Employee Leadership Program and the 66-Day Law Firm Turnaround at hiringandempowering.com.